Guten Abend. Good evening. I'd like to have you all found a seat. This one of our colleagues still seems to be looking for one. Yes, okay. I'd like to welcome you quite cordially to our second Streitwert event. That's a series of events on politics. And again, like in our first event, we will be talking about Cologne. And our topic today is entitled Lessons Unlearned. It's about the TV news on the first and second German TV channel, the ARD and the ZDF, about the about New Year's Eve uh, 2015 in Cologne. My name is Ines Kappert, and I'm um, in charge of the Gunder Werner Institute. Um, this event will be held both in English and in German, so we have interpreters, and if you would like to hear the interpretation, we have headsets for you over there. We will also be making a recording for the press, so if there are journalists here in this room, you don't have to make any recordings. We are making a recording, and we are, we'll be more than pleased to make it available to you. There's also going to be a live stream. Almost a year after the events, it is clear that um, New Year's Eve night 2015 has far-reaching consequences. Last but not least, because of the way the media reported about the events in that night, the sexualized assaults in that night. Now, let us try, try to remember what happened in the very early January of this year. The news about the sexual assaults on women in Cologne, maybe by refugees, by people from North Africa. This news was regarded by the majority of people in Germany um, as a proof of the fact that the welcoming culture in Germany had come to an end. Maybe that it had even been a mistake from the very beginning. As you may remember, the main media always asked the same question. Will the overall attitude of Germans change now? How long can Germans maintain or sustain their welcoming culture? And with the events in Cologne, it was obvious that now the change had come, now the game was over. On the 29th of January, the federal government declared they had agreed on a new asylum package with the objective to reduce the number of refugees in Germany. So that was only one month after New Year's Eve. Um, these were the first political consequences. And um, in this asylum package, um, the um, option for family members of refugees who already lived in Germany was suspended for two years. Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia were declared um, as countries of safe origin. Afghanistan, too, is officially regarded as a safe country of origin. It was exactly this political decision that was a result of the violent events on New Year's Eve that had disastrous consequences for many women and children. Because in many cases, the first refugees to, c to come to Germany were the men, in the hope that the, their families would join them later on. In particular, in the context of Syria, this political discussion can literally have lethal consequences. The protest against the further undermining, against the basic right, fundamental right to asylum, um, was very limited. But there was a great resonance, a great reaction coming from the political right. Donald Trump, who was then still the um, candidate, he used this opportunity in order to appeal to his millions of Twitter followers saying Germany is going through massive attacks to its people by the migrants allowed to enter the country. New Year's Eve was a disaster. Think. What actually happened that night only gradually came to the notice of the general public in spite of the extensive media coverage. Even today, a committee of inquiry in the state parliament of North Rhine-Westphalia is still investigating the police's conduct in particular, because there were a few questions about that conduct. The police, as um, the Die Zeit newspaper wrote in June this year, half a year later, um, when they were to report on what really happened, the Die Zeit newspaper wrote um, that 
the leading uh, officers of police uh, only found out at about one o'clock at night that women were being harassed. And now more than 50 people are waiting in the waiting rooms at the uh, police station. And some women are upset because the policemen didn't help them. Other women are crying. At 8.57 on the 1st of January this year, the police um, publishes a press release, the police of Cologne, saying the police of Cologne take stock, um, relaxed mood, and more or less peaceful celebrations. That was the official press release at a time when the, when several um, when several complaints had already been filed with the uh, Cologne police. On top of that, on the 1st of January, there was an alleged phone call where somebody phoned the police uh, in Cologne um, asking them to um, suppress any reports that contained the word rape. The, um, the inquiry committee has now um, tried to, uh, of the state parliament, has now tried to discuss the matter what this phone call was about, who phoned whom and who said what, but this hasn't been clarified yet. Um, the fact that there was a lack of coordination between the security agencies um, and the lack of a security concept for that New Year's Eve night led to the uncontrolled situation at Cologne's central railway station. This fact was also brought to light again in the investigative report uh, in the Zeit magazine. What the TV stations, the ARD and ZDF, the first and the second national channel, and all the other principal media focused on during the first few weeks was the origin of the perpetrators. Sexualized violence, this was the big topic. Sexualized violence was interpreted as a problem that had been brought into the German society from outside. Focus, a German magazine, and the uh, weekend edition of the Süddeutsche Zeitung, um, he used to cover only a week after the event, where you could see white women being grabbed by black hands. Now, the Süddeutsche magazine excused for this cover. Focus magazine didn't. However, these, of course, these uh, pictures, this iconography was based on Nazi iconography, the same principle where you could see the white, uh, uh, the, uh, a black man trying to grab a white woman. And it is also based on the time of colonialism. The Association of Female German Lawyers um, and the Feminist Action Alliance Ausnahmslos piped up with a press release on the 8th of January already. Um, it was a call against sexualized violence and racism always, everywhere. They called for full and complete clarification of what had happened and criticized the racializing concentration on the origin of the perpetrators. In the heat debate on women and Islam, however, their voice was hardly heard. Hashtag Ausnahmslos later also criticized the fact that the newspaper, uh, that, that the envisaged bill to amend the criminal law relating to sexual offenses also equates to a tightening of the Residence Acts and calls for the establishment of an offense to be applied collectively to groups. But their voice was an exception, even in feminist circles. Overall, to perpetrators were actually convicted because of sexualized violence. So there's a huge discrepancy between what the media focused on and the number of um, convictions. Uh, with the present study written by Dr. Ricarda Drücke, the study that we are going to talk about tonight, we will try to look back on the time immediately after the events. We will try to look back at a time when, of course, there was a great deal of uncertainty about what happened. Of course, right after an, e an event, media can't know the whole truth. But the question is, what are the precaution measures that you have to take for exactly that reason? What would be the appropriate way to handle the situation, simply because you don't know yet what happened? We decided to have our focus on the two big national TV channels, uh, ARD and ZDF, in particular the TV News, Tagesschau, that's the TV News uh, program on the first, and Heute Journal, that's the, TV news, uh, that's the TV News on the second TV channel, in order to find out what was communicated or presented as facts, to what extent the facts 
were not really facts but opinions. And uh, together with my colleagues at the Gunder Werner Institute, I wanted to discuss the question if I was right from the very beginning, because I had this impression from the very beginning that um, the whole media coverage was racist, but maybe I didn't actually see it that way. Maybe I'm just trying to think back on what happened, and maybe I only see it that way now. And of course, we also focused on the public, on the national TV, because national TV has a special role to play, a special mission, so to speak. It has to present a variety of different opinions, and it also has to try to avoid discrimination. So it's a pleasure now to introduce the author to you. And she will first of all talk about the most important results of her study and also about her methodology. But one thing before we can start. In our invitation, we said we were also going to invite representatives of these two TV channels, the ARD and the ZDF. Now, after we published the invitation, we changed our mind. We decided not to, because we wanted to avoid a situation where individual representatives of the national TV channels have to, have to justify themselves for something that wasn't even their fault, perhaps. And they would have to justify themselves now simply because they happen to work for the German TV. So we, that's why we decided not to invite them. We just wanted to focus on the study today in order to see what happened. And together with Dr. Ricarda Drücke and Meli Kiak, whom, whom I'm going to introduce to, to, uh, to you later on, together with these two, we'd like to find out what are the challenges, um, what are the obstacles, um, if you want to report about these events on TV, and what would be a way to do it better? What would be a better way to do it? So, Ricarda Drücke, it's your turn. Ricarda Drücke is Assistenz Professorin an Ricarda Drücke is an assistant professor at the University of Salzburg, um, focusing on communication technology and um, publication work. She focuses in particular on um, publication technologies, online publications, inclusion and exclusion through the media and gender studies. Ricarda Drücke has published a monography in 2013 entitled Political Communication Spaces in the Internet on the connection between space and pu the public. Now, this monography was published in the trans Transcript Publishing House, and currently she's writing her PhD thesis focusing on the media and resistance, which is also a very interesting topic. And she is also a co-founder of a project called um, Artistic and Cultural Intervention in Migration Conflicts. Yes, um, Ricarda, now it's your turn. You can talk about the analysis, uh, about the results from your study. Uh, just one more thing. Sorry, sorry. Well, I was just about to say something. Yes, but I wanted to add something. I, I, because um, first of all, I'd like the audience to do me a favor. On your tables, you will find white sheets of papers and pencils as well. So maybe you can work together with your neighbor, with the man or woman sitting next to you. Maybe you can work as a couple. And if you think back on the media coverage back then, what are the things that you remember? What were the things that surprised you? What were the things that made you say, whoa, what's going on here? So maybe you can think back on the media coverage and write down the one or two things that really surprised you, that really, well, over the things over which you stumbled back then. You have five minutes, and we're going to collect the, um, the sheets of paper after that, and then we can analyze them.
Ich habe den Eindruck, so lang. Okay, I have the impression that everybody has submitted their cards. Is that right? All right, Ricarda, now you have the floor. And please present the study. Yeah, I'm very happy to be here and to present the study. And now that I got the microphone, now that I'm allowed to speak, even more so. Now, just a few preliminary remarks. I'm not going to sketch a chronology of incidents, and I'm not going to talk about what we know now. So what was mentioned in the Zeit magazine, what really happened this article? No, I would like to shed light on the media contextualization of incidents of this New Year's Eve night in Cologne and the media coverage right after that. It should thus become clear how it was reported on these incidents and what factors became relevant in media coverage. <coughs> it should also become clear how a certain interpretation of incidents was designed already in early media coverage. Media form an important resource for the perception and interpretation of societal conflicts, contradictions, and power relations. Media has a decisive influence on what topics dominate everyday conversations and in what context these issues are negotiated. At the same time, the media also has a review and control function. In other words, the media should critically review the announcements of the legislative, executive, and judicative. And they should also supplement this with opinions and additional information. So an important aspect in the journalistic Found the principles of the German press council is the avoidance of discrimination. And this in particular holds true to the public broadcasting corporations <coughs> ARD and ZDF. Journalists always produce new topics and report on incidents, but this doesn't happen in a vacuum. There are established patterns and interpretations, routines of media coverage, continuities of societal discourses. And in those contexts, you also have media coverage. Media constitutes a level of discourse, and these discourse levels blend. If policymakers, for instance, give interviews in the media and they mutually influence each other, yet the media is dominating the discourse level. <coughs> they shed light on particular incidents and how these cultural interpretations fortify and get codified and how they offer certain patterns of discourses, I would like to show you with two examples. First of all, the election campaign poster that you will probably remember that was on the Berlin elections. When I visited Berlin in May, I immediately had certain associations when seeing this poster. You can see five white, blonde, or dark blonde women and men on this poster. The three women are in the focus because of the composition of the poster. And according to this poster, they want to party safely. Security and theoretical works of Judith Butler and Giorgio Agamben also prove that is connected to issues of migration and refugees. And non-white people are visually excluded here on the poster, as you can see. And the headline, party safely, implies that their absence promises more security. So the motive refers to a certain narrative which has fortified itself in the media discourse since January. This becomes even more visible in the next example. Last week, the Salzburg media announced the cancellation of the New Year Eve parties, a party that has attracted thousands of tourists to the old city of Salzburg. On the online platform, Austria, the chairwoman of the Salzburg Association said, I don't want to be the organizer of a party that will see sexual assaults. So the heart that you can see above the cathedral is misleading. So almost like a prophet, they assume that next New Year's Eve there might be sexual assaults. It is New Year's Eve. It is not a village festival. It's not even the Munich Oktoberfest. It is a specific date now which has fortified itself in a certain narrative in the context of an incident where there might be sexual assaults. So in addition to the allocation of a certain skin color, 
to this party safely, the security is connected to a certain date. And this brings me to my study, the study that I conducted on reporting by the public TV broadcasting corporations, ARD and ZDF, in the few days after the New Year's Eve events in Cologne. The basic question was, how did the media report on these incidents? What was the context? And who got a voice? Who was allowed to speak? And what statements were quoted by the media? And then, as it is TV news, what about rhetorical devices? As Ines has already said, we studied the news of the public broadcasting corporations AR, D and ZDF, and we focused on Tagesschau and Heute and Tagesthemen and Heute Journal, and we also included the morning magazine and special programs that were broadcast at this time. In total, these were 100 programs that we analyzed. And I used both quantitative and qualitative analyses. And I focused on actors. I focused on topics, but I also focused on narrative discourse patterns. I tried to detect these narratives and discourse patterns. And I tried to sort of put this media coverage into a context. On this slide, you can see the course of media coverage. On the y-axis, you can see the frequency, like how many programs were broadcast at this time. And the time you can see on the horizontal axis. And you can see that there are certain political incidents and events that resulted in more media coverage. The internal document of the police is being disclosed, a lot of media coverage on that. Then the res resignation of the Cologne police president, for instance. But and this is what I'm going to delve into detail in a minute. I also focus on different discourse threads. When did they happen? When did those discourses start? Well, first of all, and I can see that a word is missing here. Sorry for that. I used my MacBook, and maybe this is now a Windows problem here. Debate about the origin of suspects of suspected perpetrators. And then what about our cultural values versus the values of others? So a culturalization of the debate, as it were. And what you can hardly see here on top is the debate about political consequences that started as of day three after the incidents. Now, in the following, I would like to focus on these three discourse threads. First of all, the thread on the suspects. Here, I try to find out what labels, what terms and descriptions you can find in the programs. And on this slide, you will see that the following terms were used. Men, very often. But we also had terms like refugees, asylum seekers, foreigners, and migrants. By using these terms, a certain group was constructed that are said to have perpetrated these attacks. Especially the mentioning of asylum seekers and refugees shows that a certain group of migrants is referred to and a certain insecurity and threat is implied. And other studies have proven that as well. They were already vested in the narratives of media coverage in fall 2015. The origin of the suspects is not mentioned in 50% of the programs. However, on the other hand, in 32% of the programs, there is a reference to the assumed origin. It is not so much individual countries. It is more geographical regions that suspects are allocated to, especially in the Arab or Northern African area. This localization gets reinforced in other discourses. The news pick up this connection of a criminal act with the origin. And this results in an exclusion, because the press code actually says and claims that journalists should not mention the origin if there is no connection between the crime and the origin of the perpetrator. So there is a discourse strand created. And you can only, as a consequence, interpret these incidents in this connection. Especially as of day two of media coverage, the origin of suspects was focused on. It is mostly representatives of the police. It is 
that is quoted, and they said it is a group of young men, North, Northern African and Arab looking. And then the Cologne, Lord Mayor Henriette Rika, for instance, also got a chance to speak, and she points out that there is no evidence that these were refugees. Yet this discourse thread gets fortified, because on the 5th of January, the ZDF speaks of a no-go area, because the presenter said all warnings of strangers have materialized. Consequently, these people become a homogenized group of perpetrators. This localization of sexualized violence of outside our society delivers an another and important component to this debate. And this connects this discourse to another cultural group. Even the news programs support this reading. For instance, let me quote a representative of the police who said, this form of violence has so far been unknown to us. So unknown to us. It is very clear what the message here is. As evidence for the origin of suspects, there is reference to a handwritten note, which is shown in different news programs. This note was found with an Arab-born suspect is at least said in the media. In Arabic and German, offensive and suggestive remarks are mentioned. And this is one of the few evidences that are quoted in the news and in the media coverage. As a consequence, the next discourse also becomes very strong. The description of the origin of the suspects has led in the public debate to a call for consequences, in particular with regards to the asylum law and the expulsion of delinquent migrants and refugees. On the 5th of January already, the TV news call for deportations. The following calls are most frequent. A fast expulsion of delinquent refugees, uh, generally stricter asylum laws, and faster criminal proceedings for delinquent foreigners. In this context, for example, Angela Merkel is quoted when she says that you can also lose your right to hospitality. And also, um, Sigmar Gabriel, the chairman of the Social Democrats, who says very quickly that perpetrators should serve their sentence in their country of origin. Then there's a call for more police, more police presence in the public sphere. Because, as an ARD journalist said, in addition to the welcoming culture, we also have to care about the security of people in Germany. A revision of the law governing sexual offenses back then, a revision that had been in discussion for a few years, was only discussed in 3.1% of the programs. The necessary discussion on legal regulations was almost entirely absent in the, in the media, uh, media debate. And above all, um, this call for consequences makes it obvious, uh, makes one phenomenon obvious, the ph phenomenon of the othering. Othering describes the process where you posit to, to positively talk about your own community and classify the others as strangers. Sexualized, sexualized violence is, was connected to one specific group um, that seems to be homogeneous because it shares the same origin. Sexualized violence was culturalized and not seen as a part of your own society. Those who believed to our imaginary society were seen as women friendly, whereas the others were seen as misogynic. In d these discussions on the TV news, there's hardly any room for other positions and opinions. One example, or one exception here, was Anne Witzurek, who really talked about the phenomenon that I just described. But why are the events seen in this context? In other words, why um, do we focus so much on the alleged um, origin of the suspects? And why do we call for consequences with regards to the asylum law so quickly? Well, this, depend uh, this is connected to whose voice is heard on the media, because it's those who are quoted or who have the chance to say something and who have the op opportunity to create a context to set a framework for the events. And studies have shown that in these TV news programs, you hear m mainly politicians, government officials, and they are seen as the most credible experts. Um, in the reports on the events in Cologne, too, there was a focus on very few actors. And 
those who were regarded as competent and legitimate sources were, first and foremost, politicians. Um, in 71.1 percent of the programs, they were quoted. And also uh, members of the police, they were quoted in 47.4 percent of the events. So these are the actors who interpret the events uh, in Cologne in the media. And um, other persons, other people and groups of actors um, don't have the same amount of time to speak on TV. Um, for example, victims and um, vic uh, witnesses, their testimonies would be important to find in order to hear information on the crimes themselves and not just on the alleged or on the suspects. Um, the competence to create a context for these debates, the com competence to um, interpret these events is normally um, attributed to, um, well, government officials, to politicians. And of course, this means that the events in Cologne are dealt with, are interpreted in a particular way, which again leads to a discourse, to a narrative. And now a few words about the visual means, the imagery. The images um, are, of course, an important part of our media culture, in particular on TV. And uh, um, New Year's Eve night in Cologne is also reconstructed on the basis of the images we see on the media. And if you have a look at the screenshots here, then you can see um, that the imagery that we see in many TV news was, well, based on well, video clips made with mobile phones. Poor quality, of course. If you make a video clip at night with your mobile phone when it's dark, um, well, you just see groups of people, crowds, and hardly anything else. But in connection with the text that you hear at the same time, of course, you get a sense of threat and uncertainty. I mean, you could also interpret this as a cheerful crowd on New Year's Eve in Cologne. But at the same time, you hear somebody say something like, this is where it happened in the darkness, the crimes were committed. And that's why these images all of a sudden seem to be threatening. Now, these screenshots um, made with mobile phones also serve as a support, a visual support in the background. Again, you just see crowds of people from behind, of course, also in order to make sure they remain anonymous, because the media are not supposed to show individuals on TV just like that. But still, of course, showing all these people from behind, an anonymous crowd from behind, again, this is a certain t uh, imagery and um, a certain type of imagery. And this also is connected to what happened two or three years late, uh, two or three days later, when the media started to talk about organized crime that had taken place. And of course, again, this uh, was a reference to these crowds that you could see on these images. Now, with all these images, um, the image is only contextualized as soon as you hear the spoken word. So you see the um, pictures and you interpret them on the basis of the words you hear. So that's a connection between um, the image and the text. And um, this connection becomes more and more becomes stronger and stronger because of the repetitions and reruns that you see on TV. Now, let me briefly sum this up. <coughs> All of these leads to a discourse, um, a very special kind of discourse on the TV news. First of all, uh, this connection to racism and sexism, it doesn't really come as a surprise. It's not, it's something that we knew, for, well, that we ob observed, that we noticed from the very beginning. But still, from the very beginning, it was obviously very important in the media to make this connection between racism and sexism and the origin or the alleged origin of the suspects and, of course, also the status of these suspects uh, as refugees. So this is the media discourse that had an impact on the public debate. And um, it is similar to other public debates or media debates we've had on migration so far. Now, this connection between racism and sexism is, well, one important part of the media discourse um, and an orientalizing view, the, um, seeing certain migration group um, groups as belonging to patriarch societies is, of course, based on a traditional knowledge that we have. And at the same time, our own culture, or what we call our own culture, is perceived as um, emancipated and modern and not outdated like foreign cultures. 
That's the way it was perceived. Now, a few words um, about gaps in the media debate. It has become obvious that the focus was not so much on the victims, but much more on the suspects. The victims' perspective was hardly ever talked about. We hardly ever heard anything about the victims' perspective on TV. Now, this was also the fact because the media hardly ever talk about sexualized violence against women. And then, of course, sexualized violence was also contextualized as an overall social phenomenon, which led to calls for state uh, for repressions by the side of the state. But um, there was hardly any discussion on s a social structure where men have the power and structural inequalities prevail. So the events in at near on New Year's Eve are perceived or were perceived as a singular event, a single event that took place in a limited space with a small group of people. Now, of course, um, social debates are complex, but traditional media also have to the task to reflect this complexity. Media have the task to be careful when they talk about questions of diversity and differences. Many German journalists face this challenge, and other media, apart from the two TV channels that we studied, um, actually participated in the debate in their own way, and they even proposed their own agendas. However, in the field of journalism, there are still news factors that are effective and that are based or that that are based on individual events that ignore wider views and just try to attract attention. And that's also the crisis of the traditional media. Still, again, we have to make it clear that it is important also for the media to take several different positions into consideration, not just the announcements and statements of politicians and the government officials, but to talk about other positions and opinions as well, and to talk about, well, what's going on behind the scene in the background. Of course, this is not only a task of the media, but of the overall society. Dialogues can make a tr contribution to social responsibility and help us have a critical view of interpretations and traditional knowledge. And this also means we always have to put into question our own sexism and racism. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, Ricarda, ganz well, Ricarda, thank you very much for the summary of the study. When listening to you, I was thinking, this is actually everything that I had expected. Everything I had expected materialized. This is kind of boring. Was there anything that you found that you did not expect, where your expectations were not fulfilled, so to speak, where things that you had in mind were not confirmed? Yeah, I was also thinking it is really boring because there's nothing new. This is what we had expected. These results were to be expected. But it still shocked me again that my expectations had been fulfilled. I tended to think maybe this is my specific view on the news that I see and listen to and the articles that I read so that I maybe turn a blind eye to other media coverage. But this study confirms basically everything. Where other interpretations are possible comes to sight when other people get a say. Anne Witscherek, for instance, mentioned this connection between origin and sexism. In the Morgan magazine, Morning magazine, victims were interviewed in an anonymous way. And this added additional perspectives. This is very important. It's not just to focus on the policymakers and the executive as sources of information, but also on others. Would you say that this focus on executive and judicative can be explained by that? Because we are not dealing just with features or so or with programs, but we are dealing with news, which is fact. And if you interview people affected, then this might be a biased opinion and a subjective opinion. Is that maybe an explanation? Yeah, that might be an explanation. And it also explains why certain sources 
are thought to be more credible than others. It is authorities, it is police forces. They are considered to be very credible. So when it comes to information programs, they are often quoted. But it is still something that you have to challenge because we have also seen this in other contexts. Think of the media coverage on the NSU murders. Here again, the executive, the law enforcement authorities were often quoted. And that was the contextualization. Only in hindsight do we know what voices were not listened to. Victims were not very credible. And the victims didn't get a voice. But in hindsight, we know that wrong conclusions were drawn from that. Having said that, I would also call for including others. I know that media coverage works in a certain way, yet it is important to question these perspectives. Maybe we should include other perspectives, especially when it comes to these issues, where it's not just a news that is broadcast. Yeah, it's, it would have also been the fact that women affected by violence were not protected by the police. This is also part of the whole thing, and it's a fact. All right, thank you very much for that. Central issues have been mentioned. No diversity of opinions, no diversity of perspectives. Instead, a focus on the police and the law enforcement authorities and the judiciary. And only afterwards, beyond the broad public, is the conduct of the police investigated increasingly. But this is no longer part of the media narrative. This becomes a special discourse to a certain extent, which, of course, can be 